You're listening to the Hello Awesome Podcast, and this is episode number 22. Today, guys, I am so excited to bring you an interview with the one and only Charity Gail. That's right, the singer-songwriter behind the amazing anthem, Amen, is speaking with me today on the Hello Awesome Podcast about worship, loving the Lord with your whole heart, and waiting for the right time for God to send you the right person. I love Charity's heart so much. You can tell by her words and by her actions that she truly is a worshiper of the Lord, that she uses her whole life as worship to the Lord. Charity shares with us on the podcast today how she got started with people and songs, what it looks like to be on the road as a newlywed, and how it feels to be part of something greater. There were so many questions we didn't get to on this podcast episode, so I'm already planning for part two, and I cannot wait to talk to Charity in the future again. She is truly an inspiration, and I really do love this woman of God, and I cannot wait for you guys to just listen to all of her wisdom and what she has to say today. So let's just dive right into it. This is episode number 22, Heart of Worship with Charity Gale. You're listening to the Hello Awesome Podcast. I'm JC, and this is the place where we get real, sharing truthful insights that will encourage us to make intentional choices in both life and business. I want to start conversations that not many young Christians today are having. Will you join me? This podcast episode is brought to you by Chosen Vessels Apparel. One of the best ways to share your faith is to wear it. And Chosen Vessels Apparel has the designs that will show forth your faith to other people. Their designs are rooted in the apostolic truth, and you can find them at chosenvesselsapparel.com. And by using the code HELLO10, you can get 10% off your order for the month of June. Don't miss out. Chosen Vessels Apparel has some amazing designs. They have super soft t-shirts. I know, I have one myself. And if you have seen around social media the hashtag Be Apostolic, you can thank them for beginning that. Chosen Vessels Apparel will also be in NAYC. So if you're going there, please stop by their booth. You can find them at chosenvesselsapparel.com or go follow them on Instagram at Chosen Vessels Inc. Do you have a Christian business or brand that you want to advertise on the podcast? Let's work together. I would love to help you out. This summer, I have a special sale going on that for only $10, you can get an ad on two episodes of the Hello Awesome podcast. That's right. For only 10 bucks, you can get me talking about your amazing business or brand on the Hello Awesome podcast for two episodes this summer. I have some amazing content coming up and I have some awesome interviews. So if you had an ad spot in one of the episodes, you're guaranteed to get traffic and love from listeners. For more information, just email me at helloawesomeshop at gmail.com. Or if you're on Instagram, just send me a DM at helloawesomeministries and we'll chat more. Hey guys, welcome back to the Hello Awesome podcast. I have somebody here with me today that I'm so, so excited for you to meet. I have Charity Gale here, and I have been a huge fan of hers for a while now. Her music is so inspiring and just full of anointing, and I'm so excited that God has brought us together with you today. It's so great, Charity, to have you on here. For those listening, can you just share who you are, what you do, and where they might know you from? Yes, absolutely. Well, first of all, thank you for having me on your podcast. Um, I've really enjoyed getting to know you and I'm really proud of you just doing this podcast for other people to be able to listen in and be blessed by it and everything. So kudos for that. That's amazing. And a little bit about me. Let's see. I was born and raised in Buffalo, New York. It's the land of chicken wings and Niagara Falls, and it's absolutely beautiful and has such amazing people there in that city. Um, My grandfather and my dad were both pastors at a church there in Buffalo, and so I'm PK through and through. I have an amazing mama who's been my support since the very beginning, and she goes above and beyond to help and do whatever is needed. And she's just an amazing woman. Um, 
And then I have a little brother, not so little anymore, but um, he's younger than me and he's awesome. His name's Brendan and he just got married to an amazing lady. Her name is Catherine and she couldn't be more of an amazing sister-in-law. Like it just feels like we've been sisters our whole lives. And so God's definitely blessed us with her. And um, yeah, I've been singing since I was little, literally grew up on the pew at our church and loved to be a part of choir practices. My mom was the choir director. So every Thursday night we would end up going to church and having choir practice. And so I just got a love for music and worship from a very early age and had my first solo in church when I was like three years old. My uncle like stood in front of me holding the microphone and he was like singing along with me, but I literally just loved to worship. So from a very young age, I think God had just started putting that um, instinct in me to want to be in his presence. And I'm so grateful for that. I have a little dog named Harper Lee. She's a Maltese and she has more personality than I think I've seen even in some humans. <laughs> and um, I just love what God's asked me to do. And I just recently got married to my amazing husband, Ryan, um, who's also a worship leader and a songwriter. And we've been traveling with a group called People and Songs, and it's just been an incredible experience. But I, I've literally walked my entire life worshiping the Lord and leading others in worship. And just what I've learned through that experience has, has just been so life altering for me. Like, I don't think I'd be the person I am today if it wasn't for um, this love of God that it, I just can't get enough of him. I just love the Lord so much. And I'm just grateful for a family that um, encouraged that love and relationship, you know, and um, yeah, so that's just a little bit about me. That's so amazing. What a journey. <laughs> I love hearing that. And I think that's so encouraging to others out there that if they've been brought up in church and they're just following after the Lord, that he's going to take care of every step. Right. Absolutely. And I didn't know that you are from Buffalo, New York. That's so awesome. I actually am from Connecticut. That's where I live. So fellow New We're England neighbors. Here. Yeah, that's so awesome. <laughs> I knew I liked you. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, people and songs, that's such an awesome opportunity. And especially that now you and Ryan can travel together. How cool is that? It's amazing. So I want you to share with me, how did you get started in people and songs? Um, so people and songs, I got started with them in 2012. I had gone to Nashville to be a part of a conference down there. And I met this awesome woman of God. Her name is Jenny Lee Riddle. Um, she authored Revelation Song, actually. And we just had an instant connection. I think the Lord placed in her heart that we were going to work together and be friends. Um, and so she began to mentor me and took me under her wing and prayed over me and groomed me as a songwriter. And then from that, I was able to literally watch people in songs grow from just a group of songwriters that wanted to put at, like scriptural truth in the mouth of the church to this community of people that come together that literally whenever we get together, we just want to see God's glory fall. And so we write songs to produce more people to come into his church that will produce more songs. And so it's like this cyclical thing of people and songs are going to produce more people, which are going to produce more songs. And I think we're seeing proof of that. Um, we have a summer camp called the emerging sound um, where we groom teenagers and college age kids to write, but not write just from a place of, um, of it's about me, myself and I, I'm going to be a better songwriter, but it's literally about humbling yourself and mm -hmm. taking the talent that God's given you and putting it solely towards the Lord. And the Lord has just breathed on it, and it's been such a beautiful thing. Um, so, yeah, I've been a part of that for about six years, and God has literally just, like I said, breathed on these songs and taken them. Um, and they've just been such a blessing to so many people, including myself. I mean, I, I love these songs that the Lord is giving us because they're so based in truth, and they're so based 
directly from the Word of God. And I couldn't ask for a better position that the Lord's placed me in right now. So it's just a beautiful thing, and I love it. That's really incredible. And I didn't realize that that was a camp. That's so awesome because I do see some recordings of that. And yeah, you can just tell God is all over it when you guys are with each other. It's beautiful. But I think at the heart of it, it's because people are so hungry. So when we come together, we're so hungry to see a move of God. And he's moved and blessed and breathed on it every single time. And so I'm a firm believer that if you just, you know, let yourself become vulnerable in the presence of the Lord and humble yourself, he's going to move. Mm, Yeah, I agree. I agree. And I think it's just beautiful that that's really at the center of it all because it really is all about him. And I feel like when you are coming with that expectation and you already know who he is and how just glorious he is, only good things can come from that. Right. And the other beautiful thing is I've seen people who haven't experienced the Lord before, you know, experience him for the very first time. And every time I see that, I just, I can't believe that God would allow me to be a part of that because it's just such a beautiful thing to see, you know, and their eyes get wide and they, they are so overwhelmed with the love of God that's being poured out. It's just incredible to watch every single time. Yeah. Yeah. I bet. I know for me, whenever I see like a little child, just feeling that presence for the first time, or even a visitor, you know, when they come into church. And I know for me, I wasn't brought up in church. I have a different background than you, but that's how cool God is, is like when I stepped into that church for the first time and I felt his presence, I mean, I was that like tough New England girl, like you cannot cry in front of other people, especially not strangers. And (laughs) when, when you're in his presence, it's like, you don't even care. Like it just comes and you're just overwhelmed by him. And it's such a beautiful experience. Yeah, it really is. Now, um, we're really seeing such a mighty move of God through Christian music today, I think. And people and songs is really part of that. So what's it like? And I know we just kind of talked about this now, but you being on the kind of the front lines, being on stage, invited into these spaces where people are ready to worship God. Can you tell me how that feels like being on the road and seeing that? Man, it's incredible. I, I think the best part of it though, is um, I've learned to be able to have those same kind of experiences just at home with the Lord on my own. And, you know, we, We'll have these um, times of worship, people in songs will, where we're just gathered in a living room and we're just pouring out our heart to God and giving him all the glory and worshiping him when nobody's looking. So I think going out on the road and then doing that in front of thousands of people sometimes, it's, it's almost like there's not a difference for me, really. When the Lord moves, the Lord moves. But to be able to watch and see what, like the ripple effect of that Mm. and to see it, it, because it's so contagious. When you grab onto the love of God, when you see, like if you're expressing it yourself or even if you're sharing it, you know, because if you're full of the love of God, you're going to share it with other people. And that could be with, you know, just a smile or maybe you pay for someone's meal at some point. But I think Christian music today is definitely turning around because we're, we're the church. It's, it's no longer about like the church being entertained for entertainment's sake. Now it's about, you know what, there's got to be a message in these three and a half minutes worth of song. And I'm just glad to be a part of it. So when God shows up, whether it's in your living room or it's in a room with thousands of, of other people, you know, God is always going to be God. And so what I see happening is like people getting this, uh, realization and this revelation that, you know, it, it's cool to have the lights and it's cool to have that kind of congregation or, or concert feel to it. But at the, at the very heart of it, like Jesus is the heartbeat of it now. And to actually see that um, and to see songs being written and produced to, to preach that message, to preach the gospel message and to be just have the, its teeth sink into the word of God, the way that it is, that's where I, I see like 
this revelation and just the power of God coming through. And, you know, it, it's cool because these are just real people, right? Like these aren't superhumans or, or people that um, are better than anybody else. Like we're just people that want to see God move. And so when you get into that atmosphere with people of like-mindedness, you know, mm -hmm. when you find somebody else that's that way, um, you want to share with them in that worship experience. And then somebody else sees that and says, yeah, I want that. I mean, that, that's something that I'm missing. And yeah. so just to see people get saved from that and to, you know, see people grow in that, especially young people, teenagers. I love to see teenagers worship the Lord. I love to see kids worshiping the Lord. Mm -hmm. um, Cause when he becomes the center and he becomes the heartbeat of it, it's just such a beautiful thing. And like, I give props to, you know, Lauren Daigle, who takes these kinds of songs and takes them literally to the masses. Like she's preaching a message that some of us don't have the platform to preach on yet. You know what I mean? Yeah. So to see that kind of revelation and uh, revolution in Christian music has been super cool. And I've loved being a part of it. Yeah, I think that's so amazing. And I love that you were touching on, you know, this is this is who you guys are when the lights go off, like when you guys go home, like this is like Jesus is in your heart. And actually one of my favorite recordings, because I am a fan of those living room sessions when you guys just jam out. And I love that you record them and share them because there's so much power in that. I love your version of Divine Exchange in the living room session. I love that song anyway, mm -hmm. but just that um, the move of God during that song um, in the living room that day when you recorded it, it's blessed me multiple times. And so I love that you mentioned that because I think it's so important to realize, like you said, you guys are regular people, not superheroes, just people who are loving the Lord and, and expecting him to move because you are there to worship him and you know that he's so good. He's going to pour out on anyone who is ready and willing. Right. Right. And I think that's the part of it is, you know, you have to realize I'm nobody, you know, God, God is just so important to me. And so I let him work through me and he's the one who, um, kind of expanded my sphere of influence. I didn't have anything to do with it really. Like you said, it's just, I, I think back to the teenage version of myself who was, you know, insecure and just worried about, you know, life and, Mm -hmm. If I could go back and tell teenage charity, you know, all you have to do is love the Lord with your whole heart. I would do it in a heartbeat, but you know, God's got to grow you and God's got to see you through some things. Um, but yeah, the center of it is the love that we have for our God. And he loves to be in the center of the praises of his people. That's what his word says. And so, yeah, I, I don't think that anybody can look at me and say, Oh, you know, you're super special. No, what makes me at least in the sphere that I'm um, being able to minister in is because I just want to see the Lord move. And I think if people got that in their spirits, like, you know, you could do the same thing I'm doing with mm -hmm. your own core group of, of people, you know, yeah. or even like people at your school or, or wherever your life situation might be. So I think if we just got to the bottom of it and realized, listen, I'm nobody and you're nobody, but God can use us. And that's really cool. You know? <laughs> yeah. That's so awesome that you said that. Cause I agree. I really do. And I find sometimes um, even in the different things that I've done, writing a book or, you know, having a shop or having a podcast, I do get different comments from different people. And I have to kind of remind them is I appreciate the, applause and I, I love when they tell me good things because it makes me feel good obviously but this is something that God is using like God is working through me I did not cultivate this myself I'm just kind of going through whatever doors he's opened for me and he can do the same for you I mean he can do the same for anyone there's there's nothing special really about us that sets us apart except that he's called us each into individual places to minister in different ways you know? Right. Mm -hmm. Exactly. We're all called according to his purpose. That's exactly it. So I wanted to know during the songwriting process, do you guys usually sit down and have one of these jam sessions and the song comes from it? 
how does the process look like when you're sitting down to actually like pen a song? Can you walk me through what that process might be like? Yeah, um, I guess I'll say it looks a little different every single time, depending on who you're writing with and the situation you're in. Um, my friend Melanie, uh, just pointing back to what you just said, like we'll be in the middle of a worship set and she will open up scripture and literally start singing the scripture and then a song will be birthed out of that I've seen that happen I love that and yeah I love it too and I've been I've been doing that also but I think that as far as like if you're an aspiring songwriter and you're sitting down and thinking how do I even begin um it looks a little different every time like I said so sometimes it'll be like okay well let's let's pick a theme or a topic and it could be joy, right? So you sit down mm -hmm. and you pray, first of all, that whatever comes out of your mouth, that it would be what God wants to see on paper, right? Um, and then also make sure that it's always truth. Like we always want to be super aware of exactly what we're saying because we want to make sure it's always true. And so normally it'll come straight from the scripture. Um, Psalm 23, I am not alone, for example. Joshua and Stephen, when they were working on that song, they actually used the exact scripture. And then this amazing anointing, anointed song came from that. So it comes from scripture. Um, when I was younger, I used to start a song and get fed up with it and walk away from it, especially if I was writing by myself. Mm -hmm. And when I say that literally I had to grow in the process of songwriting, like this, it took years. Um, some people are really good at it and can do it right away. For me, it took a long time, but it's like anything. Like when you're learning math, you have to get through all of math. And if you're working on geometry, you know, two plus two is easy, but two plus two didn't used to be easy. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So right. we'll usually sit down with like two to four writers and we'll have a topic and we will write a song usually within three to four hours. Um, other times it will be like, if, if there's a, a need, we'll say, listen, we need, we need a song for that. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. we need a song declaring victory over this particular situation. And we'll write a song based on that thing. And we mostly finish what we start. Um, more often than not, we will absolutely finish what we start, which is really important too. And I think it's just different for everybody, but for us, like we really just focus on making sure that it's planted in the word and that we are very focused when we're working on it and um, yeah, and just cover it in prayer. Right. That's definitely really important. Actually, when you were talking, I was thinking about one of my favorite songs is Amen. And I just love the lyrics of that song. And I wanted to know if you could just share a little bit about how did that song come to be? Amen. Mm. That was probably one of my favorite writes I've ever had. Yeah. We were at the Emerging Sound. It was the last day of writing for that week. And we had been tasked with writing a song. Each There were different groups. So there were about 12 different groups that were writing on the same topic. And the topic was, what would you want to sing to the Lord when he returns for his church? Hmm. And so it's funny because the group I was with, there was about seven of us and Joshua Sherman and Stephen Musso and myself were the teachers in that group. And then we had some of the emerging sound students with us and the college campus that we were on was renovating because it was the middle of summer and they wanted to get all the rooms ready for when school started in the fall. And so the room that we were supposed to be writing in that day, they decided to be working in. So we didn't have a writing room. And so we literally tried to find all these different rooms that we could actually just start to sit down and write. And we finally decide, okay, well, this isn't going anywhere. Let's just go in the middle of the student union in the college campus and write there. Hmm. And so we're sitting on a bunch of chairs and there's a small little table. And then the levels above us, like the second and third floor overlooked into the student union and there were people walking around. So it wasn't, you know, the most conducive of, environment to start writing a song but I literally looked at everybody and I said listen if we don't get a song written today I at least want to know that 
we worshiped and praised God with this time. And so we just started to worship the Lord. And then I think someone in the right had said, well, let's look at what the church actually says when Jesus returns for his church. So we turned to Revelation. We looked at chapter seven and we noticed that there was a phrase that the people of God used, you know, it was all the people clothed in white robes of every tribe and every nation and every tongue. And they lifted their voices singing, amen, blessing and honor and glory and power be unto our God. And so we read through that whole thing. And then we noticed that amen happened again. It like bookended the praise. Mm. And we're like, how awesome is that? Like, amen. It means we believe it. It is so. So let's write that. And so that's really where the chorus came from. Amen. Blessing and honor, glory and power. Amen. And then we were like, well, if we're going to be seeing God, let's talk about how we are beholding him. And I just love to picture God on the throne because he is king, right? Like he is the Lord. And so when we get to that place of reverence, where we're saying, Mm -hmm. you are God, I am not, it's all about you. And I just, I had this, you know, that, that picture in my head of people of every color, every tribe from all over the world, lifting their voice in one song. And we wrote Amen. And, and it was amazing because we just, we felt the presence of God fill that entire student union. And later we found out there were people on like the second and third floor that were like asking like, what is going on down there? That's amazing. What is that? From the very beginning, that song has held a special place in my heart, and I know the hearts of the other people that wrote on it, but it just it's always been a declaration of no matter what, we're going to say blessing and honor and glory and power to you, God, because it belongs to you. It doesn't belong to me. And that it's always a reminder that we should always be humbling ourselves also. So to sing that and to like have declaration and say, you know, holiness has a name, it's Jesus. Right. Victory has a name. It's Jesus. Yeah. You can look anything in the face and say, no matter what's happening, I have Jesus. He is my victory. Mm-hmm. He's already won. And I know it, it sounds like a simple song, but I think, and it, literally we didn't, it didn't take as much time to write it either. We were literally immersed in what God was doing. And I I really believe that it was God's will that that song was written. And that's no pat on my back. I just, I really believe that God's using it for something greater than I could have even possibly imagined. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And you can just tell it really has become an anthem for people individually. I've had so many breakthrough moments with it just kind of playing in the background, but the words just penetrate so strongly And because it is scripture and it is truth, it is just, it's almost like a crying out of our heart to him, you know? And I just love that that's how it came to be from the very beginning. Yeah. And well, we loved it so much, that kind of amen bookend thing. We decided to make that part of when my record came out. So the very first track on the record is amen. And then there's an amen reprise at the very end of the record. And it's, I wanted it to echo Revelation 7. And I'm, oh, gosh, I just love that song so much. And I love what it says. And I love what it does. That's incredible. I love that idea that you did that for your album because it really just makes it, it's just so personal. Well, we did briefly talk about how you just got married. And so I did want to talk about <laughs> it a little bit. Um, yes! switching gears. Uh, but yeah, so congratulations. Thank you. Oh, gosh. (laughs) Well, I know that being married can be super fun, but it also still is a lot of work. And you guys are doing that as newlyweds on the road. So how is that Mm -hmm. going? (laughs) Well, like you said, it's not easy, but I couldn't imagine my life any different. I, I absolutely adore my husband. And I'm just so grateful that God has allowed us to actually be on the road together Because when I was single, I used to think, you know, like, would I have to stop what I'm doing in order to learn how to be a wife? And the Lord has given me both. I'm able to still be on the road with my husband, but he's also letting me learn how to be a wife. And I don't know 
how other wives do it, but like, I'm really enjoying, you know, even just a simple little task that like maybe other people find mundane and I probably will find mundane in the future, (laughs) but like just doing his laundry, for example, I'm like, Oh my gosh, I have a husband and I get to do his laundry. (laughs) So like those little things are, you know, um, being able to pray for him and being able to, you know, just do ministry together and to do life together has been really cool. I know I keep saying such a blessing, but I I don't know a better phrase to describe it because he is like, he's so loving and he shows me the love of God every day through his actions and through his words. And also he's just such a covering, you know, I I've always felt that I was (laughs) a big circumference to cover, you know, (laughs) and, and, and the Lord gave me somebody that I feel like I fit completely under, if that Mm. makes sense. Um, Yeah, it does. I, I, I always, I always feel safe and I always feel like I can be exactly who God created me to be. And so I just appreciate like the fact that Ryan runs with me at full speed. You know, Mm -hmm. I don't have to feel like I have to lessen my pace and I don't feel like um, I'm behind him either. We're literally running step for step with what God's asking us to do. And so that's just been so cool. And I get to write with him you know, we get to write songs together about the Lord and then sing them together. And so it really, I, I don't know. I think the, it was definitely worth the wait because he's so incredible and he's exactly what, what God intended for me, you know? So I would just say this, if you're still single and you're waiting on the Lord, keep waiting on the Lord because it'll be so worth it when you find the right person. And I don't even really, I don't think I should say find the right person when God chooses the time for your person to come into your life Um, because it's just been amazing and yeah it's been hard we've been on the road we've been in vans for 12 hours had to do a worship night and get right back into a van and you know that stuff can be uh fun but it's tiring at the same time and you know the fact that we get to to do that with our people and songs family you know it's it truly is a family at this point and with all of the ups and downs that come with that but god really has been making us stronger through all of that. And so, yeah, we've been married six months and it's been awesome through all the ups and downs. That's so cool. Yeah. I love how you said that, that you guys are at kind of like the same pace, but you feel like you're still kind of covered by him. I think that was kind of a beautiful illustration. It did make sense. I did understand what you were trying to say. I've thought that about myself too, but um, God knows what he's doing. And one of the things that I love about, you know, uh, having people sharing their different relationships and how that came to be is just kind of giving people out there hope that if they're still waiting, it's okay to wait. God has somebody appointed for you. I think about just the many times in scripture, the examples of people who, you know, have waited and God just kind of came through at the right time with the right person for you. All about the timing and not trying to rush everything. Right. Well, and that's kind of a, you know, something that I thought for a long time too, is that God's timing always meant that I had to wait. And when God magnified Ryan to me and I realized that he was the one, God was like, okay, go. And, you know, God's mm-hmm. perfect timing ended up being really fast, you know? Yeah. No, sometimes so, it is. Mm-hmm. Right. So <clears throat> I would say too, just be encouraged and be 100% yourself in the season that God has you in and be the best version of yourself you can be. Because it wasn't until I realized that, man, I need to step up my game just as, as a person and as a child of God, like I just need to be me. And it's like, once you have that confidence in yourself to walk with the Lord on your own, then, you know, Ryan came into my life and it's just been such a beautiful, um, such a beautiful (laughs) example. Yeah. Well, no, just a beautiful (laughs) example of how God, he always has your back, but he's still waiting for you to grow. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cause you, you have to be a good person for your spouse. You know, if you're not, if you're not ready and you trust in the Lord, I think God's going to make it so that you, (laughs) you're going to be ready when it's time. You know, I had a lot Mm -hmm. of breaking and a lot of, you know, dying to go through before I was ready for Ryan. And I know that now, you know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. Oh yeah. I definitely know what you mean. (laughs) Actually. 
Well, Charity, sincerely, thank you so much for taking the time to chat with me on the podcast. This conversation has been such an amazing inspiration to me, and I can't thank you enough for just being so open to sharing your heart with us. But I wanted you to just take a couple minutes to tell everybody where they could buy your music and where on social media they can find you. Well, um, I have Instagram and Twitter, and the handle is charity underscore Gale. And you can find my album on iTunes or on peopleinsongs.com. And we have charts available and um, Spotify. My music's on Spotify, and I don't think I have anything else. (laughs) Just go search. You'll find her. She'll come up real quick. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you so much again, Charity. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you for having me. If you found this episode inspiring or helpful, would you take a screenshot of it and share it on your Instagram stories, tagging me at Hello Awesome Ministries? It will encourage me that you were blessed. Also, don't forget to leave a review and subscribe so you can tune into future episodes. To learn more about Hello Awesome, head to HelloAwesomeMinistries.com. Until next time, keep your chin up, beautiful.